Hi, it's Stephen Bruce Wong with Automation Experts, and today I'm going to show you how to do liquid level inspection with the Cognex camera. So specifically, this application would be for a visual inspection of a food or beverage line where you want to determine uh, that the level of food or drink in the container is at the level that where you want it to be. I just want to show you the, the drinks that I am uh, inspecting. This happens to be a glass bottle. <coughs> There's no real reason why uh, it has to be this brand. It's just so that I can expense uh, <laughs> these drinks for a video. Um, but anyways, you want to see that, you know, of course the liquid level varies quite a bit. So if you compare these two, um, you know, depending on your process, maybe you want to be really stringent about exactly how high the, the liquid level is, or maybe, uh, like Stewart's, maybe you, <laughs> you don't really care that much. Okay. So that these are two different liquid levels in, uh, just bottles of, uh, soda that I got off the, the shelf at the store. And then of course you have this other one, which I cheated and I just, uh, I opened it and I drank some out of it, um, just to demonstrate, uh, you know, a, a failure case. So let's just jump straight into Insight and we'll show you how to program this thing. So before I get started, I just wanted to mention that, um, you know, what I'm going to show you here is going to be somewhat simplified. So of course, you know, in a production situation, you are going to add, want to add more logic potentially to make the code, um, more reliable. And, uh, yeah, that's something that I would do in a production setting, but, um, you know, for, for right now, we're just doing some validation. And so I don't really think it's necessary to do that. I just want to get things going and, uh, show you how to do this. So here's sort of the end result. So, you know, what we're, what we're going for, but I'm going to go ahead and, and start a new file just so you can see the entire thing from the beginning. So I'm just going to go file, uh, new job. Do you want to clear all data from the current job? Yes. And we're starting from scratch. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do, typically, uh, insight pops you into this sort of, um, easy builder mode. And unfortunately, you know, while this is good and it works pretty well, it doesn't really give you all of the, the power and all of the options available to you, uh, in insight. So I would like, to use the spreadsheet mode. So we're going to do that. So I usually go control shift V control shift V and that jumps me into the spreadsheet mode, but this doesn't look like a new job. So this spreadsheet, if it's new, should be totally clear like this. Okay. So I'm going to go into the image here. I'm going to double click this first cell and this just allows me to change things about the image uh, and how it's captured and it will actually update live. Uh, in terms of, um, you know, what the image looks like. If you want to hide this spreadsheet, you can always just go shift F six and it's going to hide that spreadsheet. So <clears throat> I'll show you, uh, why I ended up, uh, putting that piece of paper in front and you'll see really easily here in a second. If I just remove it and I hit F five, which is trigger, um, You'll kind of see a bit of a reflection in there. Uh, it's probably not the worst thing ever, but I just felt that the image results were a little bit better with uh, better diffused light. So there you go. So I'm just going to put that sheet of paper back against the background here. I'm going to hit F5 again, and we're back to our um, sort of diffused image. I don't really like this because I want there to be a, a high contrast between uh, the area where there's no liquid and where there is liquids. So I'm going to double click the image and I'm going to change this. I'm going to increase the, oh, you can't see that. <laughs> I'm going to increase the exposure because, and I'm just going to put it over here because I want to be able to see the image at the same time. Uh, and I want there to be a bit better contrast. So I, I actually found that I was at around 25 before and that worked out for me pretty well. Click OK. Shift F6 to take a look at the image. I'm pretty happy with that. That seems all right. Of course, you can spend a lot of time optimizing the image um, and optimizing the lighting. And the better and the more time you spend doing that, uh, the better results you're going to get. So just moving forward from here, 
Next thing I want to do is I just want to detect an edge. And what that's going to do is it's going to go over the pixels and it's going to start to look at where you have a, a transition. And that's what we're basically going to do here because we want to find this tr transition between this light part here and then this dark part here, which is the liquid. And then that'll kind of give us the liquid level. So that's my strategy uh, or pseudocode, if you will. So go back to Shift F6, and that brings us, that unhides the spreadsheet. And where is it? Uh, you go to the palette and under functions. Okay, we can do find line and just click, double click that. And notice I, I clicked the cell where I wanted to go first. So I'll make a, another video on, on exactly how the spreadsheet works, but it's basically like Excel um, with a few sort of auto populated windows that or wizards that help you auto populate the certain cells. So the first thing I want to do is I want to um, click on the region. It's not, not going to be a fixture in this case. I'm going to click on the region and then I click this button up here. Um, which is edit graphic and then I want to drag this up to here so I don't really want to get um, the cap or anything I want to just get the region where the liquid could be so it'll be somewhere in here and below and I want to go all the way down uh, almost to the bottom just in case the liquid line is you know lower than that so I hit enter um, okay so I've got my region and then you can see obviously where the region is, where it's going to be looking for that light to dark transition. So I go back to edges. Oh, another thing that's really important um, that I just messed up here. You want to make sure that this arrow is pointing in the, in the direction in which it's going to search for that light to dark transition. So that's not right. It's actually going to be looking sideways right now from left to right. So I want it to look from top to bottom. So I'm just going to rotate this and then just fix it. So you'll see in real time, it's actually detecting a line here already, but that's not what I want. I, I want to detect the liquid line. So the next thing you could do is um, just go find, you can go find by best score, but you can also choose the last edge. And then you'll notice that it's going to move this line to the last edge. Uh, the threshold of acceptance, you can play with that depending on what you want to the threshold of acceptance to be. Uh, the angle range, I want there to be some tolerance just in case, let's just say that the bottles are moving and maybe the liquid line is not totally parallel with the ground or the conveyor. Maybe I want it to be, I don't know, plus minus 15 degrees. So I'll just add that. The edge width is how many pixels um, the edges that you're looking for. So it's looking for an edge that is approximately three pixels wide. And then it's just asked me what I want to show. Uh, I actually want to show everything. So input result and the chart. So I click OK. All right. So now I have the first bottle. It's I can hit F5 again to refresh. That's a live image, not a live image. It's an image it just took now. It's analyzing this and it's kind of giving me this liquid level here and that's what it recognizes the liquid level is or the edge I'm looking for. And that's great. So let's go back to F6, um, Shift F6 to unhide the spreadsheet. Now we've got row, column, row, column. And what this tells you is um, it basically tells you the row at which the line occurs on one side and then the column here. So it says row 464, column 723. So basically that is just the row. And if you look in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, it shows you what the pixel value is. So that's what it's referring to. So it's 460, so it's roughly 450. And then uh, in terms of the row, in terms of the column, it's 594. And if we switch back to the spreadsheet, this is about 450 and about 594. If we go to the second corner here, this is about row 450 and column 721. And if we switch back to the spreadsheet, it's around row 50, uh, 450 and uh, column 720. So this is just giving you the coordinates of the two endpoints of that line, which is great. So now we can do some math with that. So what I want to do is I want to see what the average, um, maybe I want to see what the average row is. 
of this line because I want to see where it is um, in terms of height, right? So I'm just going to make a thing, a little cell. And if you want to make a comment or a label, you have to put quote first. I'm just going to call it average row. Hit enter. And like an Excel spreadsheet, I can expand this and do whatever I want to just make it to my liking. So then I'm going to go mean. Unlike Excel, you don't have to put equals in front of everything. Uh, bracket. And then I'm just going to choose this one. And I'm going to choose this one. And I'm going to hit enter. So this is going to give me the average between these two numbers. This is 462. This is 464. So this is 463. And that's about what I'm expecting. Okay, and then I want to create a, another field called pass fail. And now we have to decide what a pass fail condition is. So if I go back, um, let's just say that I want, let's just say that I want a fail to be, the liquid level is somewhere below the neck of this bottle. I think it's uh, my customers will be super mad at me if uh, <laughs> if the liquid is any lower than this neck part. Or you could even make it the label too if you wanted to, right? But I'm just going to make it for the neck part for this uh, for the purpose of this exercise. And I will show you how to do that. So and when I go here, we know that the bottle uh, the bottles are going to be pretty much the same size. That's, that's a, I think, a pretty safe assumption. The second thing we know is that... Um, you know, the camera and the conveyor are not moving. So the distance between the bottom of the bottle and where the liquid line, or sorry, uh, the bottom of the bottle and, and wherever the liquid line is, is, is relative to something that we know. So I think it's pretty safe to make the pass a fixed um, pixel value. So if I go down here and I put my mouse around the middle of, or the end of this neck, it tells me that the end of the neck is about 815. Uh, pixels. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the spreadsheet, shift F6, shift F6, uh, and then I'm going to go here and I'm going to go if, and I'm going to select bracket. If the average row is greater than 815, then we want to make this cell fail. And if it isn't or else we want it to be a pass. So the code is very similar to Excel. Hit enter and then we hit F5. So we can see in this case it detects the liquid line here and it says this is a pass. If we go back and look at that. So just to demonstrate I'm going to put a different bottle in front and you'll see a different image come up. So hit F5 and you can see clearly it's a different bottle, a uh, different image. And if we go to Shift F6, that is also a pass. Yeah, I'm just gonna put the one that I drank in front of the camera now. Hit F5 and you can see um, here, it's still detecting the liquid line down here. And if I go Shift F6, I can see that this particular one failed and it failed because uh, the average row, which is 997, is less than 815, which is what we said uh, was going to be the pass criteria. So now it's time to, revi to revisit that 200 bottles a minute uh, requirement that we set out in the beginning. So 200 bottles a minute, again, translates to roughly 300 milliseconds per bottle. So every time I hit this F5 button, you'll see that the there's a little box here at the bottom that populates and that is uh, 76.2 milliseconds right now. And that just tells you how much time it takes to take the picture and do all of the processing uh, on the actual camera. So because we're only at 76 milliseconds, uh, we're well within the feasibility for this application. Uh, that's not to say that there aren't many other options. So, you know, if you have a really strenuous application, you can do things like uh, decrease or simplify the algorithm or uh, you know buy a higher power powered camera uh, or perhaps do some more clever things with the lighting so that you're not relying so much on uh, image filters and post-processing 
uh, of the image to get the result that you want. And there's even products available now where you can just use the camera as a camera and then you can use the full power of your computer to um, you know, do all that processing and the computer has a much more powerful, can have a much more pow powerful processor uh, in order to help you with really strenuous applications. So there's lots of options out there, but for this, uh, all of the processing is happening on the camera right now and it's handling it just fine. So hopefully now you know a little bit more about liquid level detection uh, for the food and beverage industry and know how that's done uh, with a uh, Cognex or a smart vision camera. If you like what you see, please like and comment and subscribe. Um, I'd love to hear from you if uh, you have an application in mind for your own factory that you're looking at using vision cameras. If you do have something like that, please uh, send us a comment or send me an email uh, with the application you're looking at and we'll try, we'll, we'll do our best to cover that for you. Again, a big thanks to uh, Shelly Automation and Landau Controls for lending us the equipment, the lighting and uh, also the cameras to do these videos. We've worked with them before and we really like them because they have a, a great lab that allows them to test a whole bunch of different lights and tell us exactly what the optimal lighting situation is. Um, if you have a, a physical process that you want to automate and you're not really sure how to do it, uh, give us a shout as well and perhaps we can uh, point you in the right direction. Thanks again for watching. I'm Stephen Bruce Wong with Automation Experts and I will see you in the next one.